I had something very different planned for today's video, but a winter storm hit and it is snowing to beat all outside. So that brings us to the shop. Got a nice wood fire going and I'm not entirely disappointed because I have something really, really special uh, to share with you today. And this is an actual tiny hand plane. Have you ever seen anything so small? Is that not the coolest thing? Some people ask, is this a salesman, a sample? Is it a toy? No, as far as I can tell, it's a real plane. It's a real functioning plane. This was given to me by my father-in-law, Vince. Um, you saw him in the trampoline video. Vince has a, uh, him and uh, my mother-in-law, they own an antique store. And he came across this and gave it to me for Christmas. And I am, I'm just delighted, just delighted with it. You can see here, it works just like a, a regular plane. Here, we've got the little set screw, very good condition. You can still got the black paint on it. Here's the iron, look at that. <laughs> Isn't that neat? It's a little rusty, but it's been, it's in good condition. It, it's not, um, it's serv serviceable as it is, but I thought, let's do a, here's the other piece. There's only three pieces to the whole thing. Right there, you can see the iron and then the cap. No chip breaker on that one. And then uh, the body and the sole. Be interesting to see, we'll find out. We'll flatten the sole and see, see how it turns out. I'm not gonna strip off all of the, the, the paint or the Japanning, I'm not sure what the, maybe that's what they called it. But what a great little tool. Look, look at the little indentation there for the index finger to do, to do work, to, kind of, to, to guide it and, and to give you a little bit of extra grip. A lot of thought went into that, but a really for fine woodworker, what a handy little tool for doing really small detailed work. So let's see if we can't uh, do a little restoration on this today and uh, get it sharpened up and check out the plane and the sole and see how well it works. So let's find out what condition the sole is here. We'll use the diamond plates. They're flat, very flat. We'll find out here in a minute what we're dealing with. Where I've always started on all of the planes that I've restored, I always start on the sole. You know, I guess if the, if it needs to be flat, if it's not flat, um, you know, there's not much point of, and if it can't be made flat, there's not much point of spending a whole lot of time on one. Certainly less critical for a little tiny guy like this, but let's do, do it just like a big one, you know, I want it to be as nice as we can there. Well, starting with the coarse diamond stone, of course, this is the, this is the Paul Sellers method of the little sharpening, three, the three diamond stone configuration. And it's, it's wonderful. I mean, it's just been wonderful. It's just, I've tried so many things, there's just no, nothing better. I, 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 use it, I use it all the time. It's, it's uh, kind of expensive. I put these diamond stones, um, I'll, I'll double check. I think they're in my Amazon store if you wanted to look and see which ones I got. It, go to wranglermart.com. Um, but that'd be a great Christmas gift. You know, and, and you don't, and they're kind of expensive to buy all three, but you know, maybe you just buy one. Start with one, and, and then you, you pick them up over time, and, and that's not a bad way to go. If I was just going to buy one, I'd buy the medium one. Then I'd buy the fine, and then the coarse. Isn't that great? Look at the way that that, uh, it is so satisfying to get that, see that nice kind of that machine look on there. You can do that with a diamond stone, and they just are so great for so many things. I don't, that's not gonna be bad at all. Well, uh, it's pretty consistent across here, across the, the opening there, and let's keep going and see what, see what we can do here. Not going outside to work today, that's for sure. Allow me to kill two birds with one stone here. Some of you ask uh, how I got those overhead shots uh, using a tripod, and I don't use a tripod. I, I built this little overhead rig system. I have an old broken tripod that I have with a quick attach on it. And I just snap the camera up in there and it's, it makes it really nice. If you do any type of product reviews or table type stuff, uh, dealing with a tripod is really tough. So that was my solution uh, for, the, for the thorny problem. Focus, focus. Okay, we got that. Look, look at that. That turned out really good, didn't it? So you can see here, we should be able to see, I think you can see, is that it, we've got it nice and flat and it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit lower on the front there and on the toe there and then of the heel. And that's fine, that's the way that it should be. Uh, it was originally kind of already the nice shape, it was in good condition, it just didn't hardly need much work at all. So I, I kind of went with that, but you can kind of see, you can see the polish marks right there. 
We don't need to do any more than that. We'll just leave that. But that that's really good. It's really flat now. You can see, well, you can't see, but you can trust me, it's flat because the diamond stones are very precise. But well, that, that didn't take long at all, didn't it? Isn't that nice? So let's uh, let's go ahead and we'll we'll polish it up on the finer ones, because well, why not? You know we got them here and let's make them nice and smooth mirror polish on there. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. That's in, it's in good shape there. Isn't that nice? Put the polish on there. You can really see now where the focus auto focus doesn't want to work. We'll go manual here. A lot of people ask, you know, sometimes I'll get blurry shots in videos and like, oh, you got to get rid of the manual focus. <laughs> it's like, good grief. And you know how much work it is to do all this work and to run the camera, especially when you're talking about blacksmith forging and then deal and manually set a focus on this. You have to rely upon little helping aids. I'm a one, one man band here. I do everything by myself. So um, uh, taking it off autofocus, you know, it's not perfect, but it doesn't, it doesn't always. And sometimes I just have to use it, but that looks great, doesn't it? Look at, I mean, it really consistent and even. It was not in bad shape at all. So I think we can set this aside. I mean, we'll just wipe a little dust off of it, but I'm not going to, you know, we don't have to worry about doing the sides, flattening the sides like a larger plane. We can see that it's, it's not designed that way. But that right there, that's, that's it. Let's turn our attention now to the iron. I'll tell you what, there's going to be a lot of happy Wrangler Star subscribers this Christmas when they open one of these Russian diamond sharpeners or Russian knife sharpeners uh, Christmas morning. As I, um, I think they're still back order. I know a lot of, um, I've talked to a lot of your wives and girlfriends that are, uh, they're getting them for you. So look forward to that. Don't shake the box. You don't want to ruin the surprise, but that's going to be perfect for this little iron right that. Or iron here. I'm gonna go. We're gonna go with what they have here as far as the angle. That looks about right to me. So let's we'll set up the jig and, and see what that is. We'll get our stones laid out here. So we'll start. Let's start with the coarse, the coarse stone, and we'll see what do they have this at. This is oh well, that boy. That's really cool. I was sharpening irons with it. It's at uh, what's that? Forty degrees. It's just about right. It's pretty steep. Let's, let's run it here and see exactly. So harnessing the power of the electron microscope, we can get in here and get down and dirty, see what we got. So I'll take a little Sharpie. You've seen this before. I'll mark this on here. I'm pretty sure I've got the angle set about right, but we'll just do a little, little test run. Right there. Okay, so we're, 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 we need to come down a little bit. We're too, you see, we're just touching on the bottom. We, we want to come down. And I want to kind of match up what they have here. Is that, I think it's whoever, I, I get the, you know, you can just tell, I can kind of get the impression that whoever owned this was probably a carpenter, seemed to know what they were doing here. Just keep working that. What we're, what we're trying to do, you see it's getting wider there. Actually, I'm way, way too steep. That's because I had a long, a big plane iron in there last, last time, or a chisel. No, it was a chisel. That's what I was doing last time. We'll take that down. Still, oh, this is going to be sharp. I'll tell you what, this is going to be a sharp, sharp little tool when we get done with it here. Just still working it down. What ring coming way down? I was not even close. There we go. Look at that. Now we have the other side there. Just kind of see. Yep, that's where we want to be right there. That there, that is nice right there. That is nice. So let's put a little bit of, of water on that stone. When I first started using this, I was running these dry and, and I've started running them wet. They work better. They're almost like kind of like a water stone. I don't really know exactly what that, but they really, water really soaks up in it. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That is nice, isn't it? That's in good shape right there. Now I should have flattened the back of it first and it just dawned on me, but I got so excited to use the knife sharpener that I, I overlooked that, but we'll go back and do that. Let's uh, take it down. You can see, that's it. See a little bit of few imperfections on that, on that, uh, the end of that iron, but that's not a problem. Not something this small, not with this sharpener. It'll take that down before you can say Jack Robinson. I think it's important to do this in the right order. I pulled it off the sharpener here. Well, we're going to flatten the back here. I just put it on the core stone. We'll 
give it here a few things. Let's just take a look at it and see, see what we have ahead of us here. Oh, that's okay. Look at that. Look how flat that is. Now just a little bit more. G give it a minute on each stone here, and then we'll back to the sharpener, and then we'll finish it up. Just finishing up, that's with the fine, that's a super fine stone there. Man, oh man, I can, I can feel the wi little wire on that, that, look at that. Look at it, it's so sharp. Oh, it's scary sharp. Those corners are just like a, like a cat's claw. Ooh, I'm excited to try it out. One last thing there, the last piece, a little, uh, little cap. We'll just flatten that out. It's just a little bit rough. Got a little rust on there. Get a nice, there, so look, we've got a nice machine surface on there. And right here where it comes in contact with the iron, clean that off, just get some consistency and so it presses equally on the iron. Let's see. Yeah, that looks better, doesn't it? Let's give it a little leather stropping too. It's bring that wire, get that wire off there and bring everything, all those microscopic little threads to a point. Boy, that is pretty. That's just like a mirror polish on there. It, it may, I'm, it's probably never been this sharp, ever. Look at that, I mean, it's just, it's like a diamond. It's just glimmering in the, in the lights overhead. Ooh, that's sharp. Let's see, let's see how it does here. Let's put it back together. Put a little ballast all on here, especially those surfaces that we just kind of machined down there. Those will want to rust on us. Oh, I can even see, I can make out the name of the tool of the iron. Well, it looks like I kind of, I can't really make it. I can just kind of sand it off, but this will protect that a little bit. We've got that neat little set screw there. Look at that little guy. What a beautiful little shape that is. Yeah. Isn't that cool? We'll put a little bit of that on the ballast all on the threads. Wow, that's neat. Okay, this is a little going to be a little bit of different, a little different adjusting this one. It's going to be kind of more seat of the pants. Look at the, see there's a groove in there. That groove rests and, and it, um, the set screw now will wedge between the iron and lifting that cap up. It's important for that to set in there. And then setting that, to, well, puts the pressure on that. All right, so there it is. Ready. Ready for use. All right, let's get a little piece of, uh, I got a piece of clear fur. We'll put that in the vise and let's see how it does. Isn't that a beauty? <laughs> you know, as James May puts it, it's some things, you know, just, They'll talk about different cars. It gives me the fizz, you know. <laughs> I think that's a very appropriate way to describe it. Some things give me the fizz, um, I, and I, you just, I just don't know why. This is one of them. It, it just, I, I really like it. You know, I've got little things, you know, all over the house and in the shop that give me the fizz. You know, like this little thing, this ice pick deal that my, uh, was it my granddad's stuff? Here it is on my woodworking bench. I don't use it very often, hardly ever, but... I, li I like it so much that I just keep it there. <laughs> it's got it's got to be there. Look at that! Isn't that neat? All right, let, let's try it out here. So I got a piece of three quarter inch fur. This is a bit thick for a little plane like this. I just don't have anything thinner, but I, I think it's it's straight grain. I think it'll be okay. So just like any other plane, so you know we we got to set that the blade at, get their angle right. You know this doesn't have an adjuster. We'll have to do it the hard way, but. 
kind of how you do that is you just check each side and, and you see you want to have a, the same thickness of planes. I can see that it's favoring that right side a little bit. So I, I'll just loosen this tad bit, move that over. Boy, it really bites there. Just the smallest amount until I get, so I'm biting into the wood right there, biting into the wood. Oh, it's, a, it's maybe a little bit. Oh, that's lovely. I'll go with that. It's a, it's a little deep, but let's see. Let's see what we can do here. <laughs> Isn't that something? Look at that. Look at that. Let's do some more. <laughs> it, sure, it sure does work good. It's like a little, it's the cutest little thing, isn't it? It's like a little beetle or something. One hand. Just beautiful. So the chips, you get one pass. Look at that, they're just straight. I, I, I'm just amazed. I'm just amazed how well it works. I'm putting a lot of force on it there. It seems to be holding. I like how the... The chips, they stack up, kind of look how they stack up in your finger right there. You see that? I get those nice little ribbons. That is neat. I just do this all day. That is something else. I, I didn't have, I didn't realize how well it would work. I thought maybe a little novelty, maybe a perfect tool to put in Mrs. W's glass cabinet. Got to keep one in there. But uh, I have to say that this is... This is, this is something I would use. Look at that. Lovely. Total control. Look how good it would be for doing chamfers on edges. Right there. You know, it fits in the hand very well. And that little indentation for the finger, I just couldn't be nicer. A tiny little chamfer, tiny little chamfer. I mean, it's just, it's just perfect. Look at, look at that. I'll give you a view so you can see the, it really does have, it's best to hold it that way. And this is, I mean, this is cutting deep. I've got it set too deep actually, but it's still, it's still doing it. I think that's sharp. Wonderful. Clean, sharp, wonderful. Thanks, Vinny. Best Christmas gift ever. <laughs>